So when I take a photograph with my phone, I can turn a still image into a long exposure and I can go back and forward in time to make sure that I capture the exact moment that I want. This is brilliant. Now this is just a short video this week because I'm just about to head out the door to do some filming at a pro printing lab in the northeast of England for a full length printing course that I'm putting together. That said, I wanted to mention about this live photo setting in my iPhone that I didn't really know about and understand. What? And I'm guessing it's in pretty much every other mobile phone out there. Now ordinarily, I just took photographs with my phone and then quickly edited them using something like Lightroom Mobile. But this live setting changes everything. To be honest, I thought it was just a little bit gimmicky as you saw movement whenever you swiped through your photographs in your photo library. But it is way more than that. When you open the camera app, tapping on this icon here turns on live photo. Once it's turned on, you get access to so much more once you've taken the photograph. You can create long exposures, and this I knew about, and the results can look really good. To create the long exposure, all we need to do once we've taken the photograph is to scroll to the picture within your photo library, and in the top left hand corner, it'll indicate there whether or not the picture was taken with the live setting on. If it is, you'll see the icon. You can then tap on that to bring up this menu, the bottom one being long exposure, and when you tap on that, moments later, the phone creates a fake long exposure, which actually looks really good. If we just try a look at another one here, if I scroll to this image here, taken at Heartland Key, again, taken live, we can see that with that little icon in the top left hand corner, tap on that to get the menu and then press long exposure. Now, don't get me wrong, they don't compare to you know, a well executed long exposure photograph on a proper camera, if you know what I mean. But the results can look really good. Now you can't control how that long exposure effect looks. It's a one tap effect and it either works or it doesn't. You can't change it from looking like a, a one second exposure to maybe a 10 second exposure, for example. But it is really clever stuff. However, would I want it in my main camera? I don't think so. I just love being outdoors and experimenting using different filters, different shutter speeds. It's kind of like the thrill of the chase. However, in my drone, absolutely, yes, I would want it. Taking long exposure photographs obviously means your camera needs to be completely still. And that's really tricky with a drone. You can do it, but it's limiting. You certainly couldn't do a full one or two second exposure and capture movement in the sea and the rocks be perfectly sharp, even on a day with no wind. So yeah, on the drone would be amazing. So long as you could actually go into those settings there and change how that long exposure will look to give it the effect of a one second, a two second or a 10 second exposure. However, this make key photo option is absolutely brilliant. When you take a photo with the live setting turned on, you can then open the photo from within your photo library and then dive into the settings. You click on the live icon and then you can drag left and right to choose a moment in history immediately before or after you originally pressed to take the photograph. That way you can ensure you get the exact moment that you want captured. So in this example, I don't like the walking position of the surfer, the way his legs are crossing over. So I click on edit, then the live icon and I scroll left or right. And then when I have the exact moment where I think the walking position is exactly how I want it, I just press make key photo and we're done. Imagine how incredibly useful this would be if you're photographing groups of people. There's always that one person who maybe isn't smiling when everyone else is, or maybe someone blinks. With this, you could just go back or forward in time within that photograph and choose a moment when the eyes are open. No more masking eyes in Photoshop. I just think something like Make Key Photo would be such a great thing to have built into my main camera. So I have that option of diving in if I just happen to miss the exact moment that I needed. Now, I know this is a potentially 
contentious issue. Some people may think that this is cheating in photography, but is it? Is it really? Photography is so much more than just capturing that exact moment. It's composition, it's lighting. There's a whole load of different things in there. Personally, if I get the photo I set out to get, I'm really happy. And I just think something like make key photo would be really, really good to have. Now, to quickly follow on from this, something to mention that I think is really useful is within Lightroom. But when I say Lightroom, I don't mean Lightroom Classic or Lightroom Desktop. I mean Lightroom, as in Lightroom Cloud and Lightroom Mobile. And that's in the presets section. Now, you may be working on some photographs and just maybe hit a creative roadblock. You know you want to edit the image, but just don't quite know what to do and where to take it. So when we're in Lightroom, we can choose a picture, and then we can go to the Develop module, and here in the top right-hand corner, we have the Presets icon. When we click on this, we can see the Recommended section, and very quickly there, you saw that Lightroom was then analyzing the actual image, and what it does then is throw back lots of suggested edits for that particular picture. Now, as you put your cursor over it, you can see how that preset would affect the actual image itself, and also at the top here, there's loads of different categories where we can have a look at how the image would look if it was a subtle edit, a strong edit, black and white cool, and so on. Now, what's also really good about this is when you put your cursor over it, if we open up some of the individual sections within the develop module, like the light section here, every time you put your cursor over a preset, you can see how that actually affects each of the individual sliders. So not only is this a great way of giving you some inspiration about maybe how you could take an edit, it's also a great educational tool if you are looking to learn how to edit and looking also how certain pictures were edited by other people. So it's a fantastic tool. You've also got the premium section, which are the ones that are already built in to Lightroom, and then you've got the section here called yours, which is where you would save your own presets as well. And this is all identical within Lightroom Mobile. Now, is this cheating? See, I don't think so. I think this is more like having someone sat next to you to give you some ideas and some suggestions about how you could take an edit. It certainly shouldn't be treated as a, a one-click fix, the way to edit a whole picture with just one button, but more of like a way of getting you started to give you some inspiration. And we all need that from time to time. But there you go, that's long exposure, make, key photo, and the presets in Lightroom. Now I realize I may have opened Pandora's box there, but what do you think? Myself, I think advances like this are really exciting, but I'd be really interested to hear your take on it and whether or not you think it's cheating. But for now, that's me, I'm done. Give us a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already. That's just a great free way that you can support this channel. I'll see you in the next video.